it is freezing in here I've just come into my little workshop and I've got somebody down here. Can you see her? Say hello. No? Uh, back from the walk. We've done a three and a half mile walk and halfway around we uh, stopped and... Oh, my, my scissors are broken. Oh, no. My favourite ones as well. They must have dropped off. I bet the cat's knocked them over and they're broken. Oh dear me. Gonna have to get myself a new pair or see if I can get somebody to repair them. I'm quite oh they I'm quite capable of repairing them. But that sheared off, so oh what a sh what a shame. Time to buy myself a new pair, and I think I probably have to get myself a decent pair. To be honest, these aren't that great a pair. Oh well, one pair of scissors broken. I do have several other pairs. Um, there was a time where if I was showing that to my father, he would say, do not throw them away, I will fix them for you. And he sh oh, and he's just shown me how to do it. But um, unfortunately, it's the day and age where you just can't be bothered, isn't it? You just can't be bothered to do it. Uh, what have I been doing? Well. I made a purse for Debbie but then my daughter said mum can you make a purse for a friend who she works with because it was her birthday and she's been very good to her and so I sent that one down to her and that was this orange one I'll put a picture of it somewhere here for you to see then I made another one I made several as you know I made that one grey one with it with a plastic popper that opens up like that then I made um, then I made a purple one I wasn't happy with that because I've got a little crease on here uh, but I like the inside very nice so then I made an orange one which I shall I'll put up so that you see and that went to my daughter then I made this one with a little a flick up flap that opens like that and inside it is uh, grey with purple but there was just something about it that was annoying me now this is the one where I've water waterproofed the fabric I've waterproofed the fabric and I've got a, a bit of a shine on it I've actually put two, two coats on that um, made it nice and firm but oh it was a pain to sew around the edges there then i did the same one but this time i only put one coat of the waterproofing on i like that i'm not going to go sewing around the edges because i was having a right carry on with it but then i've changed things now i've just got a little purple popper on there and i haven't finished it yet because i have the inside to do yet i haven't done the inside yet but what i found was i've made a lot of modifications instead of pulling it through the inside of the back there i did i left this bottom edge open and then once i'd finished i tucked it in and i sewn along the along that edge there just along there and that's the only part that i've sewn on i haven't sewn around here and i haven't sewn around there now then
cold, it's freezing in here, uh, told me that if you are going to do purses and bags, you need something, a press, uh, 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 I think she called it like the kind of trouser press that you get. And I suddenly thought, oh, oh, I've got two heat presses. One is a little hand one that you pull down, not a trouser press, but it's a heat press for the job that we do. And the other one's a big one. And the thing that I found is when you use it, it makes your fabric go really nice and stiff with no marks on it at all. And I thought, and look, I mean, look at how perfect, excuse the cat hairs, but look at how perfect it does that. So, and can you see, I've, I've got a little piece there which is totally wrong. So this, I thought, oh, that's really good. So I've started using this heat press. And that has made a vast difference. It really flattens the fabric and makes it a lot easier. Uh, makes the purse look very professional looking. So, then I decided I was, I didn't want, you know how, I didn't want to keep measuring the fabric out the way it is. So I made an, a template and I'll show you my template. So I made a template and this is my template. This here like that and basically i did it so that that's the that's the lid that not the lid the flap that comes down like that but i haven't bent on that and then i've done that 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 and that i've had to put pieces of paper together and like that so i end up with a piece like that and um I can see exactly where I am there so that goes like that and that's my purse and what I found is by doing that I can take a long piece of fabric like this long piece of fabric like this and then what I've done is let go that way I put that round the top there let me show you and then I have folded it. Let me, if I fold it like that. And I've done this, and then as I've got to the end, like that. Oh, that's wrong. There, like that. By putting the fabric on, and as I've gone, I have pressed it and that gives me that and I've pressed it with it with it in the paper and that has made a big difference so I can what that would normally take me a long time to do probably about 20 25 minutes I can actually do that in about five minutes now I cut the strip of fabric I put the um, I press the interfacing on the back and I use the heat press to put the interfacing on and by doing that it really makes it stay then like that i've already i've got the template almost all done then i take my paper off and that's reusable so take my paper out slide it out slide my paper out like that that's reusable and my little wallet is almost good to go for the for the lining i put that like that i'm all good to go now like that so that was one added bonus and having that heat press has made a big difference it means i can perm that, that you know the back isn't going to lift off it's been really really well stuck on the other thing that i've done is when i've done the bottom there and sewn along that end i haven't put the firm interfacing in until i just before i close that i pushed the firm interfacing in so that's actually got firm interfacing in after I've gone and sewn after I've gone and turned it inside out and that has made a big difference as well so the latest one that I'm doing is that one I got this fabric on eBay and I think it's come from China Let me, oh, my glasses keep falling off the back of my head this has come from China I've put some um that's true goes like that sorry I've put some, uh, I've coated it with this, uh, with the um, Audi coat. Another thing I've found is I have brushed the Audi coat on using a paintbrush. 
use a paintbrush to brush it on rather than the, the credit card and it goes on beautifully it's really really nicely finished there and uh, so I've now got that made like that but would you know I made a blooming mistake right at the end I, I sawed down that bit and I forgot to sew down there so I've had to hand sew as best I can through the opening anyway so I've just got the little pockets to do there I've got the pockets to do but I am really pleased with that so far so that is modifying everything making a template with a paper a paper template and um, using the heat press and putting the thicker uh, adhesive putting this in I bought some more of this this um, I forgot what you call it now um, using that but putting it in after I've turned it inside out and using the heat press to do it it's called Decaville, Decaville Light. I've used Decaville Light and that's turned out nicely. My machine is not a Juki. It's not a, meant for heavy fabrics. Mine is just a brother and it was struggling a bit. So that's why I'm not going to go around the edge. And I, I think that's why a lot of people don't go around the edge. Because I think, you, you, you know, you've gone that far. And then st misstitching messes it up. So for me, you see, that one... I had a few pieces of mist stitching there and a few there can't see it on that very much because it's nice I've used invisible thread on the top um, another thing is if you're using invisible thread I have invisible thread on the top and I've got ordinary thread on the bottom I think in my I was I was using invisible thread on the top and the bottom doesn't pay to do that it's better with the invisible thread on the top and the ordinary thread on the bottom and the other thing that I do is this I'll show you I put a little stocking thing I've used some uh, a stocking thing over the top of the thread and that stops it from jumping off so that's that one done. Oops, let me bring you back there. So I am getting, I'm starting to enjoy this purse making now because I'm perfecting it. And I'm sure everybody who does do purse making, once you get going and you perfect it, it makes a big difference. Uh, like I say, I've just got the, the uh, panels to go in there and then that would be my first one that I'm really, really happy with. I'm quite happy with that one, but I'm even happier with that. I'm happy with this one this is going to be um, this has got to have just the inner bits in now um, if you see what this one on this one I've done a little instead of a ribbon I just used the same fabric on there I just I had a little bit of spare and I made it into a um, into rather like bias but it isn't cut on a bias it's on the straight so but it's gone in quite well quite nicely there right so that's that one so I'm, I'm busy doing purses as you can see and that's taking up a lot of my time but I'm going to show you something else that I made do you remember I showed you one of these and I said what I, what will I do with it well I found a use for mine I've got two every time I order this base it's like a, a flocked velvet that I get that's sticky on one side they put it in a, in a roll like this and send it to me like this so I keep getting these and I keep wondering what I'm gonna make with it I've got an idea for this one and so oi what are you doing she's got Are you playing with that? Is that what it is? No, oh, she's pulled me, pulled me thing. Oh, I had an idea and this is what I did. If I put that one away and I bring this one here and look at this. It is my spectacle tree and I've still got, I've still got, uh, I think I could do some more here. What I did was, I covered it in this, uh, do you remember I got some Fablon from B&Q and it was reduced? Well, I put the Fablon on there. I've still got the lid on the top, I don't know if you can see. Still got the lid on the top. But I put the Fablon on there and then I basically guessed where, I thought of two pairs, 
each row with two pairs and then using a little sta little scalpel knife a little uh, sharp knife I cut little holes big enough to take the glasses like that and then the glasses can sit in there like that there the glasses can sit in so you can see I these aren't all my pair I've still got plenty more there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 11 and this pair 12 and i've got another three or four i think i've got i've got quite a lot i've got about 20 pairs my latest one which i've shown you is this oh, that one didn't go in very well did it you have to bend them down like that to make them go in there um yeah and so uh these are all my glasses that i have i love glasses uh, if you're going to have cost, you know, you buy clothes and these glasses are quite reasonably priced. So now I buy glasses and this is my latest pair. I love these with a little checkered pattern on them. I think they're really good. I got these from Vogem. And now every time I see Vogem, the, the glasses look really, really massive. And in fact, another pair I got, from, I got another two pairs from Vogem in the past. One of them was this one, which these sunglasses which I when I bought them I thought they were enormous and they are and they were gold there and I didn't like the gold so I've covered that with paint little black felted pen and the other pair I had a lovely other pair frameless pair and sad to say they broke I can't remember how I broke them um I think they fell off my head dropped on the floor and broke and they only broke after about two weeks of having them so I was most gutted by, about it and so um, I figured that that's quite a nice idea because then I can see exactly what I've got I think there's still room for me to put another pair here I could have done it differently I could have gone around the circle had four or five there and then another circle but I might I might improve on that when the next time I get another tube or two but that is um, that's my glasses my little glasses stand and I keep it in the corner over here at the back of my desk so that when I'm ready to go out I can just choose which ones I want and if it's sunny I'll say all oh, right well I'm gonna put this pair on today my little Beatles type ones uh, I have another pair that's somewhere there are some that I've bought and I don't like this is one pair I bought that I didn't like and they were clear and the minute they, I think these are from Vogue M, the minute they arrived I didn't like them and they were um, they just look ridiculous and I've never ever worn them out I don't like them and then I tried painting them pink uh, still not overly happy but it's a bit like those clothes when you buy clothes and you decide that even once you've got them you don't like them so um, yeah so i have an awful lot of glasses and it's handy to have them there this pair is a reading pair that i've had had this for such a long time these are my i've had these these are over 30 odd years old shows you how my eyes haven't changed because i can still see quite well with them and they've got the bifocals i can see through there so yes i've got a lot of glasses and i figured that might be a good way to do it so that stands in the corner of my in the corner should I do it like that so you can see in the corner of my desk pussycat here haven't I got a pussycat here she's just nicely sitting here all quiet all lovely down here just watching the world go by it's a sweatshirt fabric with kind of a uh, and this is effect on the back doesn't stretch um, has a funny feel about it it's quite nice and I made it into a v-neck but um, mm, something about it I just don't like it I'll, I'll show you I'll show you me wearing it to let you see I got this jumper from Marks and Spencer's sale and uh, it was probably 15 pounds or something I thought it was quite nice I got three things but I'll show you the other ones I got in a minute um, and this goes underneath it and basically it's just a little cover but it, if you, it keeps your neck warm 
you know we old ladies as we get older you need to have something to keep your neck warm so this is um you have to make sure it lies right underneath but it keeps your neck warm it's like a little scarf type effect and this is the other one this was some spare fabric i had from my stripey fabric and this could go underneath left and so this one is basically i didn't have enough fabric so i had to do it in two pieces there's a seam down the back but it's basically the rectangle there and i've put some tape could be narrower tape but i've used thicker tape simply because it's all i had the collar can be turned down or it can be turned up and as i say it's a great use of fabric of using your ornaments of fabric would probably say it's about half a meter that you make that with and this is the stripy one that goes underneath isn't this a, and it just uses up what i've got left in my fabric i can actually turn this down and make it into a lower pole neck color, color like that and basically it's the i've used the jaylee yoko pattern and i've just basically done the shoulders but come down to form a like a bib at the front and a bib at the back and i've got a piece of elastic from the front to the back under here to hold it to keep it under my arms because obviously in years gone by i remember when these were the fashion years ago they used to keep riding up well that elastic holds it down and stops it from riding up i also got this from marks and spencers as well it's a a green a green green believe it or not a very pale green and it was 19 pounds 50. i got a 20 i think i would normally be about size 16. i got a 20 because i like a baggy style this one as well is a little bit it's a bit baggy i like bag and uh, this one it's lovely and soft really nice I just thought, well, they're nice little jumpers that I can wear when I'm not wearing anything else. And do you remember I showed you this fabric? It needs pressing this, but do you remember this is the kind of flesh fabric that people have for underwear? Well, I've made a blouse with it, but I haven't finished the edge there because it doesn't fray. And I wanted it so that I can wear it under dresses and it'll just because it doesn't it's very close to the edge like that you can't really see where it finishes do you see what i mean so i could wear a low cut type top feel quite confident because i'm wearing this underneath and basically i just uh i should have french seamed it but I, because this was my first attempt and i want attempt and i wanted to see what it looks like i've just overlocked the seams but it still looks okay and I've done, haven't hemmed the bottom either, just basically left everything as it is so that, let me show you with my sleeves, so that when it's on my arm, it's like that. So that was my uh, making of a little see-through type uh, flesh coloured top that will go under dresses with low, lowish fronts and so you can see this was the fabric this was the top that i made uh with this fabric here i've since shortened it a bit and i need to finish off the edge of it again i didn't like the way it was hanging at the bottom so i'm going to redo the edge redo the bottom rather So that's the one I made before and this is the one that I've made with the other fabric. I think you all liked that last time. It was It's actually Minerva Crafts fabric that they were selling on eBay. They didn't have them on their Minerva Crafts store and I liked them so much I bought this one, this one and a third colour that they had. And Hubby thinks this is great, he keeps saying, hey there's a guitar on there there you see in a guitar there can you see it's an upside down guitar and he says oh you could make a top for me out of that and i'm going no no that's not for you <laughs> so um that's the that's the lacala one i'll put that on and show you what that looks like lacala 2209 
another thing that I've seen would be to do blouses in the same way and I've put some pictures up after this to show you some of the blouses that I've actually captured from Instagram or whatever that they're selling to you you can buy them like that but you could use your own fabric to make little blouses in that kind of a style so just here's the, here you can see that now So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to make some, get on with these purses. The sooner I get the purses finished, the sooner I can get back to making clothes and doing other things. So I'm going to love you and I'm going to leave you and I'll catch you next time. Bye!